Welcome to City Life International Church. Um, great to see you all out there who are watching this program today of our Sunday service. Today we have Reverend Dr. Um, Daz, who's speaking to us. He has a Bible school in Kerala, a very a big Bible school, which he trains many young men and women to go out into India, into the persecuted um, parts of India, and to just minister to, and win people for Christ. Uh, we hope that you enjoy our service. We've got some worship, and we praise the Lord that you have joined us this morning. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's a great God and he's greatly to be praised. Our next song says, Holy, Holy, God Almighty, we thank you for the privilege to worship you. And with our hearts, with our voices, Lord, we say, Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. to 
seems you're greatly to be praised. you are so great there is no one like your father we come to your presence calling you Abba father may this place be filled with your amazing grace and power and presence let all of us be touched by your glory be transformed change to change the world father we love you we worship you in Jesus name Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor and privilege for me to be back home after this lockdown. Thank you, Professor Jim, for inviting me. And uh, thank you, Pastor Jonah, and the associate pastors and the team and the trustees. Well, I'm thus from India, though I live in Manchester, along with my wife is here. And my two daughters, of course, one is here. And it's a privilege to serve the Lord as a family and to see all these lovely faces. God bless us together. You know, seasons will come and go. But our Lord is unchanging. He is same yesterday, today, and forever. And his promises are same and it stays forever but those promises will be fulfilled to those who sincerely wait for it amen there are natural automatic things happening in the world i was born 
and I will die. What should I do? Do the normal things. I need not to do much. But there are things which I need to accomplish. If there are things I need to have it in my life, then there are things I have to decide and do. The choices I make in my life determines where I will be and what will be my future. That is same in my walk with Christ. This morning, I have a message as around the world. This Sunday is celebrated as a Palm Sunday. Let me tell you, this is the Sunday where we experience the amazing glory and the grace and the power of God. Jesus is walking down to Jerusalem to be glorified. Out in the world, people say, wow, that is an anathema. Jesus on the cross is a curse. But for us as the people of God, that is the pinnacle of his ministry on this earth, paying for my sin and for the sins of the world. Amen. Next Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, may that re resurrective power of Jesus fill your life. This morning for our meditation, please turn your Bible if you have one. My scripture I have taken from Genesis chapter 26, verse number 1 to 6. Genesis chapter 26, verse number 1 to 6. There was a famine in the land. Besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech king of the Philistines in Gerar. Verse number two. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land. I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all this land and I will perform the oath which I saw to Abraham your father. Verse number four. And I will make your descendants multiply. Everybody say multiply. multiply. As the stars of the earth and shall be blessed. Everybody say be blessed. Be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, my laws. So, Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Very powerful historical record in the book of Genesis. And the story starts with, by saying there was famine in the land. There is crisis in the land. There is problem in the land. This is common in our human life. Problems, pain, crisis are part of our life on this planet earth. But the question, what you do when you go through those crisis points are important. Here we see the patriarch. Isaac have some choices to make. And here it says, during the famine, the Lord is dealing with his servant. Let me tell you, when you and I go through famine and crisis, the Lord is closer to you than ever. Amen. His presence is there, but we ought to recognize his presence. We ought to understand he is there for you and for me even when things are happening around you in an unprecedented way. As we are facing even last one year, we are facing this COVID-19, the famous word of the century. <laughs> but let me tell you, we need to be drawn closer and closer and closer to God every moment of our lives. You know, in the book of uh, Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32, 
I love, I love that verse. You know, it says, with the flattery, he will corrupt those who have violated the covenant. But the people who know their God will firmly resist him. Or in NKJV, let me read it. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But with the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. When you and I go through difficult points, what we ought to do is know who is your God. There the word knowing is an experiential knowledge. Out there in the University of Sheffield, there was a department of biblical studies. Now it is no more. Now it is called Sheffield Institute for Integrated Biblical Study, part of history of history department. It's disappeared. But there are professors there, professors of Old Testament, New Testament theology. You sit with them after the class. When you talk about faith and things, he says, no, that's not rational. They have a lot of knowledge about the word from cover to cover. They learned it. It's out there in their brain. But they have no experience. So somebody put the distance between heaven and hell is one feet. They have it there, but not there. You measure it, it's one feet. They are there. They have that knowledge, but they don't experience very often, our Christian life is moreover the same. We know about Christ. We hear the stories. But this morning, I have a calling in your life. Experience him in your daily walk. Amen. Experience Jesus every moment of your life. Your life will never be the same. Hear his voice. Listen to his advices. See what God is placing in front of you. And walk through it. Your life will be changed totally. Others will look unto you and ask, hmm, what's happening with you? <laughs> I see some changes in you. Are you okay? Because you are walking and moving with Jesus and they can see you are different. I want us to walk through the Bible to see how people responded when they were facing crisis in their life. And I want to title the message, Stay Close to God. Stay close to God. Whatever is happening around you, God is in control. Don't be driven by the situations. Don't be driven by your emotions. Don't be driven by peer pressures. Be driven by the power of God Almighty. And your life will be totally changed and be blessed. Because God's plan for your life is amazing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when you look at 1 Kings chapter 17, you see a lady who is going through famine. The widow of Sarafat. We all know the story. When you look it through verse number 12, you read the whole passages. There, look at this lady's attitude. There is famine is very severe. Nothing is left at home. And she and her son have made a resolution. You know what is the resolution? Eat what all we have, then die. <laughs> My question, anyway you are going to die. Why you want to eat everything and die? Leave it and you die. Let the people who are living may eat it. But her perspective is if there is a famine, let me die after finishing everything I have. This is some people's attitude. When they go through problems, they think there is no more to go. There is no more hope. 
There is no more way I can see. Everything is closed, and the only solution is in the crisis, end my life. By ending, she needs to end everything she got. Finish everything. Eat even the last grain left at home, then die. So that even when somebody come and look, looking for the body, there is nothing left in the home. What an attitude towards life when crisis come. She is coming in search of some firewood to cook the last meal. But even in that point, let me tell you, before death could catch her, there is a miracle waiting for her if she has an ear to listen what God says. She decided to die, but God isn't done with her. She decided to end her life, but God is still in the process of making her life a miracle for others to see, which she couldn't see. What she can see is all closed doors. There is no more to go. Everything is finished. I am left, left with very little things. I cannot go on. Let me end my life here. Let me tell you, my beloved people, when you and I go through those points of life, there is a voice you are hearing from heaven which says, hold on. Do what I tell you to do. Verse number chapter 17. Verse number 12. As surely as the Lord your God lives. She didn't say it is my God. It is your God. Because I am fed up. There is no God. If there is a God, it is your God. Your God says, lives, she replied. I don't have any bread. Only a handful of flour in a jar and a little Olive oil in a jug. I am gathering few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. I'm going to cook my last meal and we are going to enjoy me and my son and we are going to die. Look at what the prophet says. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home. Do as you have said. But first. Do as you intended. What is she intending? Cook the meal. That is the first part. Second part is die. Prophet says, do as you said. What? Cook the meal. Okay. But first thing is first. First, you listen to me, but first, what she has to do? Make a small loaf of bread. I like those expressions. You know, Elijah is not asking, you cook everything and bring to me, but from what you have, make a small loaf of bread for me, from what you have. She need not to go anywhere for her blessings. She already blessed. She has very little, but that is good enough in the hands of the Lord. But she has to listen to the voice of God. First, you have to do something which is very important. From what you have, that little, make a small piece of love. And he says, for me, what you have and bring it to me. Then make something for yourself and your son. Then comes the promise. For this is what the Lord says, the God of Israel. The jar of flour will not be used up. 
and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. The widow of Sarapheth is left with two choices. Choice number one, in the midst of the famine, decided to do something, continue in that decision. Don't change it. Some people are very strong, say, this is what I have decided. I don't care. This is what I'm going to do. What is her decision? Eat everything and die. And the choice number two, listen to the voice of God and act accordingly. What is that? From what you have, give a little love to the prophet of God. And then there is a promise for her, if you do what I have said, till the land get the rain, and there will be sowing and harvest, and the grain will come to your granar granaries, till that point, your provision will not stop. You know, you have a choice to make. Either listen to God who says your provision will not stop if you act in accordance with my word or act in accordance with your decision. It is your choice. People out in the world, let me challenge you, my beloved one, are going through crisis and pain and problems. But every individual has a choice to make. This morning time, may we say to God, I don't want to die, but I will live and see the glory of God in the land of the living. I want to be like the widow of Sarapheth who decided to act in accordance with the prophetical word. There are prophetical words and the promises for you, my friends. Cling on to it and say, Yes, Lord, I will not die, but I will live. And I will see the glory of God. I thought this is the end, but my God came down and spoke to me. I will be blessed. There is, there is hope for my future. There is promise for my future. There is abundance for my future. There is greater things in God's storeroom for me, provided I am moving in accordance with what God says to me. That is the choice we need to make than deciding to end the life right there. What would be our choice? When you and I go through the crisis, will we listen to God? Look unto his promises and say, yes, Lord, I know what you say is for me. Amen. I know your promises for me. I know what is written in your word. And I claim on those promises. And my God will fulfill it. Number two, you know the famous story in the book of Ruth. Our dear sister Naomi. Chapter one, verse one following. There is a famine in Judah. Now it came to pass in the days when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to dwell in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Here comes the man in the house, and the name of the town says Bethlehem, the house of bread, but it is drying down. I'm not explaining those aspects. But there is a famine there. He decided to run away from the house where there is bread to a foreign land, finding some resources for his life. You know, sometimes we are pushed, motivated by different pressures of life, thinking grass on the other side of the hill is green. 
I can pasture there. And I can flourish there. But when you reach there, you understand the grass on that hill is drier than the grass where I was. Things are not better anywhere. I am thinking that will be better. Trying, moving here and there. But here comes this man and his two sons are dying on the journey to find bread. Look at that tragic story, heartbreaking story. Poor Naomi. In the ancient world, I would say, for Naomi, there may not have been much choice. Because Naomi's heart is always longing for Bethlehem. Probably, Naomi was a very obedient wife. And her husband said, get up, pack yourself, we are going. She would have asked, where? You listen to me, follow me. I'll take you to a place where we can have abundance and plenty. And she went with him. But in that journey, she lost her husband and her own blood, two sons, disappointed disappointed there is no hope for their future crying and weeping and here comes you see she heard the news the Lord visited not Moab Lord visited Bethlehem Judah and she came to know there is bread out there let me tell you, when you are going through famine and problems, stay where God placed you and look unto him. Don't look around to see who is providing, who is walking with me, who is taking care of me, who will help me. Maybe I will go there and here. When you go through crisis of life, stay close to God. Get his counsel. Get his advice than be driven by the pressures of situation or people. And if you are moved by the situation, the journey is going to be difficult. Naomi is coming back. We read verse number 19. Hallelujah. And she is saying, in verse number 20, don't call me Naomi. She told them, call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. Now, Naomi, in the midst of all the crisis, he, she is putting blame on God. She is blaming God I am Mara my life is very bitter because God made everything against me and she is failing to acknowledge I made a mistake of taking a wrong decision it's always it's always in human history we, we cover up ourselves. We don't take any blame. We always say it is God. It is God. It is God. He is in control and he took my husband and two sons. And my life is very bitter. But let me tell you, the decision they made made the life very bitter. And God is still calling, Naomi, come back to Bethlehem. I will provide you bread. You know, if you are a person today, wandering around and thinking, where will I find hope, more hope for my life? Where will I find blessings for my life? God is saying, come back to Bethlehem. Come back to me. I have greater things for you. In my storeroom, the place where you, are, you ran away, you come back to me. From there, you need to make an about turn. Amen. May this day be a day 
we acknowledge God and his amazing provision in our life and say, yes, Lord, I was running after that, but today I know I need to come back to you. I need to know that you are my provider. You provide for me. I need to stay close to you because your provisions are always there, available for us. Now, when you look at the Second Kings chapter 7, you see an another famine which really very interesting. And you know, there the lepers heard the story. And they are deciding, let me read it. Okay, verse number 9 of Second Kings chapter 7. We are not doing right. This is a day of good news. And we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come. Let us go and tell the king's household. So they went and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, saying, we went to the Syrian camp. And surprisingly, underline that word, surprisingly, no one was there, not a human sound, only horses and donkeys tied and the tents intact. You take time to read that story. These lepers are thinking we are going to die in this famine. But we will go to the city where the Syrians are. Whether we live or die, we want to see what's happening there. And there comes they are encountering the blessings of God. You know, you look at these people, they are lepers. Nobody listens to them. If you look at the code of conduct for a leprosy affected person in the Old Testament, very intimidating. They cannot stand in public places. But when they found the blessings, they forget who they are. They want to shout aloud to the king's palace and say, hey, we found bread. I found bread. This morning time, you and I found the bread, the bread of life. Let's not hold on. Let's not wait till morning. The morning, when the way you wait for the morning, you will be disappointed. But as long as you can, run to the people and tell them there is bread in the house of God. There is bread available there. Come with me. I can take you there. You may be thinking I am unworthy, but believe my word, there is bread available for you. You need not to die here. You and I are given by this powerful message. We ought to proclaim it to the ends of the earth. People who are dying in poverty, in their spiritual starvation. You know, one thing I realized, this gospel has amazing power to transform a total person. You know, you give bread to the people, physical bread, you can feed them for a day, two, or three. But when you give them the gospel, the attitude is changed. When the attitude is changed, their action is changed. When the action is changed, there will be positive results. You know, we were working, or we are working with a group of people. We call it Gera community in the border of India, Nepal. These community are very typical people. The men will never go for any work. Their only job is take some marijuana, smoke, and sit in tranquility and dream and dream and dream. Poor men. They never take bath. Smelly people. <laughs> Honest. And the ladies, poor ladies, they need to feed the husband. They need to feed their children. They need to look after their own families. Poor ladies. What they do, they go to the nearby town begging begging and some of them do some illicit things to get some money 
to feed the family. We found this community. We sent three men there to preach the gospel. You know, what we did is these people stayed outside their camp then tried to teach them the Bible. Their life is changed. Their life is totally changed. We taught them to take bath, cut their hair, dress properly. We, we trained them to be truck truck drivers, you know, the auto rickshaw in India, and the truck drivers, and they found job. And the ladies staying at home, they had these mud houses, they built good houses with the brick and mortar, and their life is totally changed. We started an educational center among them. You know, a couple of years ago, when our boys were traveling from the city to this village, there was a mob of Hindu fanatics stood there to stop them and said, you guys, South Indians, they call us South Indians because South Indians are darker. They can easily identify. Our shape is different than the norm. And said, you South Indians are converting these people to Christianity. And there you see the police force are there. The district magistrate is there. District collector is there. District police officers. Three top officers are there. Stopped. These people in the Gera community on Sunday morning waiting for the worship and the pastors didn't come 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, what happened? They usually be early. 11 o'clock, they started to walk back to their home. What is happening with our pastors? On the way, they found a group of people and their pastors are there. You know, they were around 18 young men who are coming from this Gera community and they inquired, what is happening? They heard the story. When they heard the story, they said, wow. You know, these uneducated, these people went to the judge and said, sir, we are human beings. We have been living there. Our children never been to school. There is no school. Our ladies were going for begging and doing all nonsense things to bring some money. Now look, we are dressed well. Our hairs are groomed. We are doing some job. We are bringing money to our family. Our life is changed. You call us Christians? No, we are not. We follow a God who came on the earth called Jesus Christ. He is our God. And his message changed our life. If you want to arrest these three men, first you have to kill us. Because we are not having any privileges. But these people walked into our community and changed our lives. Amen. That is the power of the gospel. People can be changed. You cannot wait till morning. It's the time to get out. You know, when I come to this, I, I have been coming to this church with uh, my friend, friendship with the uh, professor uh, Dr. Jim for the last probably 10 years now or 9 plus years and when I look around I feel so jealousy here when I came here probably some 9 years ago when you look around mm, this is not a right place but today when you, you move around this is the most attractive place in Sheffield People want to come and live here because there is a fragrance from this church. When the gospel comes to a place, there is a total change. Now we have more responsibility. Take this bread and give it to the people around. God brought the nations at our doorstep. He did it thinking we will take this bread and give it to them so that their life will be changed. Don't wait till morning. You and I are going through famine. We found bread. We found the bread. Now it's the time you and I have to go. Now look at the fourth category here. That is Jacob, where I need to focus and we are going to pray together. Amen. You look at 
Genesis chapter 26, our text here. It's number one, God says, stay where you are with God. Here comes Jacob probably, probably in my attitude. God is reading the heart of Jacob. Jacob would have started the journey thinking, my papa went down to Egypt. There, he became very rich and blessed during the famine time. So, let me follow the footprints of my dad. He is again thinking, I need to go down to Egypt. But God says, no. You are not going to go down to Egypt. You should not. Point number one, stay where God wants you to stay. Don't think Egypt is better for you, no. Stay where God wants you to stay. Now, when Jacob stayed in that place, you know problems started. But Jacob started to do something. Look at verse number 12. I'm sorry, it's not Jacob, it is Isaac. Forgive me, it is Isaac. Isaac planted crops in that land. And the same year reaped a hundredfold. Why? Because the Lord blessed him. When the Lord bless you, you stay where God is, then you are sowing, your harvest is going to be hundredfold. Verse number 13, it says, the man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. Hallelujah. He had so many flocks and herds and servants, and the Philistines envied him. Praise the Lord. This morning, I want you to experience that power. Though there is famine, when you stay closer to God, you started to sow, there is going to be a hundredfold harvest for your life. You not only become rich, it says, his wealth grew and grew, and he became wealthy. Others are looking on him, and the Philistines are feeling jealousy, as I feel about this area. Now, you look this place, you know, chapter 26, verse number 16, Abimelech said to Isaac, Move away from us. You became too powerful. Because they realize God is with him. Now, let me point out one key element there. When you stay close to God, whatever your ancestors lost, you will reap it. Abraham did some well there. But he couldn't pass it on to his generation. Philistines closed it. Chapter 21 of Genesis, you read it. But here comes Isaac is moving with the power of God. And he is digging it back again. Number one, when you stay close to God, the, the blessings which was halted, stopped in the past to your parents will be upon you. You will be reaping that harvest. But it is not easy. You look at verse number 21. The first step is sitna. There is an opposition. There is quarrel. But there is, there is always God's hand moving there. You look at verse number 22. He moved on from there. Dug another well. No one quarreled with him. He named it Rahoboth. Now the Lord has given us room. We will flourish in the land. This morning time, in the midst of famine, when you stay close to God, you will have the Rahoboth experience. You know what, it's, what, it, what does it say? It says, the Lord give us 
a, a land in this place and we will flourish here. The Lord has given us room and we will flourish in the land. Rahobath. And he named it as Beersheba, a place of covenant. Which even his dad, Abraham, did it. Isaac is making a covenant with God. This morning time, will you make a covenant with God saying, God, I am available to you. I need to see that blessing in the land where famine is uh, taking place. The land stricken by the famine, I want to see the blessing so that I can bless others. I need to see the power of God moving in my life. Whether it is your sickness, your financial issues, your family issues, or you are having a very bright season in your spiritual walk. And the Lord says, I'm going to make it a Rahobat in your life. Stay where God asks you to stay. Sow where God wants you to sow. And you will have a harvest which will be abundant. Others will be envy upon you. Would you please close your eyes with me? This morning time. Isaac could think like his dad and go down to Egypt. Don't follow the way your parents do. You have to have a personal encounter with God. For Abraham, it was okay to go down to Egypt. But for Isaac, God says, no, my plan for you is different. Children of God, God's plan for you is different. God has planned something amazing for you. You may be going through difficulties, but the Lord says, I'm going to give you a room and you will flourish in the land. Father, this morning time, I pray and bless your people. And I speak the heavenly blessings to flow into the lives of your people. Let them experience your glory and your power. As you were with Isaac and blessed him, even the king of Philistines, Abimelech, was envying. We pray, may others look on my people and say, there is something special in your life. Because the blessings of God shall add no sorrow into it. May that be their portion. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. God bless you all. Stay close to God.